last data set I'd like to show you is Primaquin. The researchers in this study were looking at this drug because it's very patient dependent. They hypothesized that some of the outcomes are due to differences in metabolism. To mimic this, the drug was incubated with human hepatocytes under six different conditions. The idea was to see if different metabolites were produced under those different treatments before applying it to in-human study. The treatments were plain CQ, ABT, 2D6, DNM, and MAO. So now let's correlate. So I'm going to add the results. So go back to the data. Go to the Army data. And in this case, the x-axis should be treatment rather than time. And there are no units for it. I need to put in the treatment type. So this was treatment number six, MAO. This was treatment number one. For lack of anything else, I called it plain. This was the CQ treatment, ABT, 2D6. And the DNM. Let's call this Army Training Sir. And I'm going to click OK. And the program is warning me that I already have one with this name. Do I want to overwrite it or give it a different name? I'll say yes. And while it's correlating, I'll tell you an interesting story that Primaquin has been around for a long time. It's actually been used since the 1940s. It has several side effects. Visual disturbances or hallucinations, intense itching. It's also known to cause hemolytic anemia in patients of African or Mediterranean descent, though the Mediterranean descent part wasn't known in the 1940s. And there was a plot in a MASH episode called The Red and White Blues, in which Corporal Klinger of Lebanese descent and a Jewish orderly named Goldman developed anemia while they were taking Primaquin. And that confused the 1950s era doctors because at that time it was only known to occur in people of African descent. So now we've got the correlation for Primaquin. Again, I'm going to sort by M over Z and find the parent. And because we didn't close the workspace, we're still showing the major graph here. You can again see the reproducibility. Not quite as good as I was on verapamil. But very good reproducibility still on the MS. 0.6 millidaltons. And very good reproducibility as well on the product ion spectra. But I want to see how the parent behaved across those different treatments. And this is what we'd expect. 2D6 you end up with more metabolism, so there should be less parent left. And there's less metabolism relative to the other treatments for DNM and MAO, so there should be more parent left. Let's look at this other one. This says, um, there's another 260. This is a positional isomer of the parent. There's a methyl group on the drug, and during the synthesis of it, it there's a major synthesis in the right position, and there is about 1 to 2 percent in the wrong position. And if I switch to the percent view, we can see that it metabolizes pretty much the same as the parent, which you'd expect for something very structurally similar. Let's take that one out and look at some of the oxidations. So these oxidations are in the plane, the ABT, and very high in the 2D6. But then there are other oxidations, such as this one, that's only in the DNM. Same with that one. We also have this carbamoyoglucuronide, which is in the ABT, 
me uncheck some of these other ones to make it a little clearer. And in the plane, but not in any of the others. You could also go to bar graph, and take out the parent, which is dominating here. And we can see what metabolites were under what. So it depends on the data and how you'd like to view it but we give you several options to allow you to graph it whatever way works best for you. This Primaquin data will also be available for you to work with on the cloud after this presentation. And I'd like to thank you for your attention.